let's go into our Mint Mobile hotline question of the day. If you've got a question you'd like to hear your voice on our show, go ahead and call our hotline number anytime, 24-7. That's 951-268-4259. Leave a message there and maybe you'll hear it on the show. Today's question is about James Gunn saying that DC video games are going to be in canon with the movies. Uh, let's listen to this. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Bill from Arkansas. James Gunn was on Twitter saying that from this point on, even the video games that are DC are going to be in the same universe as all the DC movies. It's hard enough having a cohesive movie universe. Do you think this is the right step moving forward into all this? Love to hear your thoughts. Thanks. All right. Thanks a lot for sending that in. And of course, one of the most exciting things, other than Hugh Jackman coming back as Wolverine to be in a Deadpool movie, is that James Gunn is running with Peter Safran, a brand new, newly created DC studio. And that is one of the most exciting things in the world. Now, what's he going to do with it? Well, he, as he's always is, James Gunn is very, very active on social media, very interactive with people who write to him on social media. And somebody just straight up asked about the video games and stuff like that and asked if the video games will tie in with the movies, to which James Gunn simply said, yes, that, that was it. That was the, the full extent of his response. Now, that, of course, started generating a lot of the headlines that James Gunn is saying that the video games are going to be in continuity and canon with the movies and all that kind of stuff. I, I'm not so sure that's exactly what he was saying, because he also said that, you know, a lot of stuff is going to be in continuity. But James Gunn also this week came out and specified that while we are creating our DC cinematic universe, we are also going to have standalone movies continue. And that's going to which I loved hearing because I love the fact that they do some standalone stuff over there. My impression that I got from that was that I'm not sure he's necessarily saying every video game that comes out that has DC characters in it is necessarily going to be in canon, but rather maybe some of them will be. I mean, maybe yes, maybe no. But Christian, I'll tell you what. When I heard this initially, that he was saying that, you know, games are going to be in continuity, I had traumatic flashbacks. I know where you're going. When... Disney took over Star Wars and they said, from now on, everything is canon. The video games, the comic books, the, the uh, stories you tell your children at night, the movies, the TV shows, it's all in canon. And I remember- Don't leave out the part when she, then Kathleen Kennedy went and said, are sales going up after I said that? Yeah. <laughs> and, and then hung up quickly. Right. But I remember saying, well, this is very ambitious, but I don't know how long that can last. Now, and of course, it didn't last long and eventually- it wasn't, was it Pablo Hidalgo who eventually once said when, when the book started, look, when you get something as deep and as complex as Star Wars, you're never going to be able to keep everything in canon. And we started recognizing in certain books, certain canon was being broken. And then Pablo Hidalgo made that infamous quote. Well, when you're reading the books, the part that are uh, consistent with the movies, that's canon. And the parts that aren't, aren't canon. To which I said, you're not sort of pregnant. You're either pregnant or you're not. Right. It's canon or it's not. So I had a little bit of flashbacks about that. But I again, I think that's what James Gunn meant was that it's some of them will be in canon and some of them will be. I don't know. You heard him say this. You saw the headlines. What's your takeaway from it? So I thought the exact same thing. But the difference is this. I think that it goes back to the whole point of what we were talking about when you have someone like James Gunn, who is also, by the way, a massive Nice Little Republic fan and a massive gaming, yeah. a massive Star Wars fan. He was probably as excited as we were when he heard all the the stuff about the canon stuff inside yeah. of the games and everything too. And I also think that he is a ma actual a massive fan of all this stuff as well. And and this is not a critique of Kathleen Kennedy. She is not of all of this stuff in general. And I think that that has to count when it comes to introducing the games and the stuff because it means you want to connect all of it. It's not just to sell it and then say we don't have any source material. What? James Gunn isn't saying that. James, I, I agree with you. I think that some of it inside of, and the same way that they're going to have standalone um, movies still, I think right. that they'll have these things that connect. But I do think he's going to make sure that these things do connect all the way through because I think he wants to do that. And I think when you think about the idea of what Lucasfilm wanted to do in 2012, it was awesome. It was the reason I read all this stuff. It was the reason I did because I wanted to learn a couple of things. Yeah, and suddenly we all wanted to buy yeah. every book that came out. And I stopped because it was, it was to me, it was more of a lie to be honest, yeah. and even when you look at like K2SO and Andor, we know how they meet in the comics. You think Tony Gilroy is going to stick to that? Probably not, right? 
But I don't think that I think that James Gunn says that in general, if he wants to have these certain things that connect, they're going to. And I think you'll have these through lines that'll make sense that, that you'll be rewarded. That's the whole thing. We want to be rewarded if we get this stuff, right. if it plays the canon. And I think you will with certain games, with certain shows, with certain animated uh, properties for sure, and certain movies. I think it'll connect and they'll be very clear and precise about what is and what isn't. I, I've got that confidence in, in Gunn and Saffron. One of the other dangers here, Rob, that comes along with something like this. Back in the 80s and 90s, the comic book industry faced a, a, a massive problem, which was, you know, you had all these comics and they all try to interconnect with all the other comics with their storylines. Okay, you read Amazing Spider-Man 1. The story continues in Bishop, special issue number three next week. And all of a sudden, you know, you're somebody who'd like to collect two or three comics every month. Now, if you wanted to follow the story, you had to get all of them. It creates... The danger, not that this will be realized, but the danger that, are you creating a DC world where, okay, well, wait a minute, if I want to watch this new Batman movie, I have to go back first and play the DC Legends of Tomorrow game, because that's, can, it, it, like, how, how close and how dangerous do you think they got to tread here to that line? Like, how can something come positive come out of this? Well, I, I, the, the real problem is that there are very few people that can, that have a grasp of how this would work. And the thing about it is, I honestly believe that it's the one place where people that are around, I'd say, my age, you had to have lived through this period of time. And you have to understand how to make, like in James Gunn's case, he's a novelist. He's written for film companies. He's now an A-list director. He's a gamer. He's a geek. He was there when Star Wars was new and has watched all all of this happened the rise of dnd the rise of video games all of it he's been a part of all of it he's a huge fan of all of it so unlike you know kevin feige specialized in one thing james gunn has a holistic understanding of all of this the question is can you put people in place that can make sure this stuff is all kept square they they, they always pay lip service to this but they never have anybody that can keep track of it all in a proper way. What did huh? they call that at Lucasfilm? They, was it the story group? Yeah. yeah they, they're, they're supposed to it, oversee Yeah, it was canon. the Holocron. Or, or not yeah. the Holocron. It was, uh, but, but even then, you, you know, you need, they've been talking about transmedia properties now for decades, where you're going to have all these different things that all link together. Now, I would say that James Gunn would know that, okay, we have a video game that's going to tell the story of so-and-so doing this, like in the DC universe. Now, with gameplay and everything, I would imagine that you've got to have some leeway, but the story that's being told, the conflict with whomever, Martian Manhunter is looking for Oreo cookies, and he runs afoul of, I don't know. Cookie monster. Somebody. <laughs> and and that, that experience, that event occurred in the video game. But the vagaries of how you have to play to get to that are probably, you know, those, that's in game, but the results of whatever happens at the end, that becomes canon. And I can see that happening. So the video game story happened, but it has to give you leeway because who knows how you're going to play it. And not, and I know you want to move on, but like the the one thing, that, as far as you're concerned about, <laughs> where, where, where did that come from? The did, wide world of the internet. I, it? I mean, I, I said when I said Oreo cookies, I, this was not just some random cookie. That's the Mar cookie. Martian Manhunter loves Oreo. Okay, so you actually okay. I was going to yeah. say where did this well, thing come from? Well, one okay. of the things that you, that you had mentioned, your concern with that because you could get lost if you didn't see it, right? You yeah. Know, you know who did it really well, even though the movie following wasn't great, was The Matrix. Yes. Animatrix yeah. was done very well. There's there's stuff about how the kid was found inside it. If you didn't see it. And you, you saw the movie, see it. you didn't need to see yeah. it. There was the video game that they had for the Matrix that played into a lot of stuff that happens in the movie that if you played it, you were rewarded and you, oh, because it was canon and it did make sense, but you didn't need it. It's a, you didn't need to see it in order to yeah. catch up. That's but how you can the do it. The Wachowskis really understood that though. Of course. Like that's, they that's were, they I mean. were probably the only creators that ever got it. And again, they're, they're of a certain age. James Gunn is a contemporary. Yeah. So here's, I can here's another working. question though that could complicate this a bit. Now, I'm not going to pretend that I fully understand the inner workings of this. I'm not. But it was my understanding that those video games are not made by DC Studios. They're made by Warner Brothers Interactive. So does James Gunn's role as the head of DC Studios give him... It's probably collaboration. More yeah. of a collaboration yeah. thing? Yeah. All right, it's going to be interesting. Guys, question is, what do you think about all this? Do you like the idea of maybe them trying to tie the games into the movies? Are you worried that they try to tie them in too tightly and you're like, you can't watch the movies unless you also play the games or whatever else? Whatever you guys think, jump down into the comment section below and let us know your thoughts. 
Guys, we want to thank a sponsor of today's video, Mint Mobile. This holiday season, the best deal in wireless can only be found at Mint Mobile. Right now, when you switch to Mint Mobile and buy any three-month plan, you'll get another three months free. As the first company to sell premium wireless service online only, Mint Mobile lets you order and activate from home with eSIM while saving tons on phone plans starting at just $15 a month. Guys, you know I've been using Mint Mobile long before this holiday deal, and I have to say it is the perfect time to switch. Since I switched to Mint Mobile, I've been spending one third of what I used to spend on my mobile service with the other big name company. And with this buy three months, get three months free, not only is it a great choice for you, but it makes great gifts for the people you love. Mint Mobile's best offer of the year is here. By going online only and with eSIM and eliminating the traditional costs of retail, Mint Mobile passes those significant savings on to you. All of their plans come with unlimited talk and text, plus high speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. You use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and switch easily and effortlessly with eSIM. Or if you need a new device, for a limited time, get six months of free service when you buy a selected device and plan. So guys, for a limited time, buy any three-month Mint Mobile plan and get three more months free by going to mintmobile.com campia. That's mintmobile.com campia.